Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. It's Ransom here to talk about movies and today of course we are talking about the brand new Marvel movie opening up this weekend. It's actually the final movie of uh, Marvel's Phase 2 in the Cinematic Universe, Ant-Man. I gotta be honest, when I first heard about this movie, kinda antsy about it. You see what I did there? Yeah, I'm pretty clever. But uh, yeah, I was just, I, I, I've had fluctuating excitement levels for this movie from the get-go. Uh, first off, I was like, all right, well, that's kind of a weird choice. How are they going to make a movie about this character? But then I found out that Edgar Wright was going to be directing it, and I got really excited. Then I found out that Edgar Wright left the project. I got really bummed out. But then I watched the movie last night, and holy crap, guys. This movie is a ton of fun. It might be the best standalone Marvel movie that they put out right so far. I would put it up there with Iron Man. It's just a ton of fun and plus these characters these people who they cast are just perfectly cast i didn't know how i was going to feel about paul rudd but he was fantastic I, i've always felt like paul rudd has always been a one-dimensional uh, actor and i've always liked him and stuff but he always felt like the same character uh, copy and pasted into different movies he's always been that sarcastic uh best friend that guy that you want to go grab beer with but he probably piss you off if you hung out with him a little bit too long it's not the case in this movie, man. He is a perfect choice for Scott Lang. And the same can be said for everybody else. Michael Douglas is fantastic as an older Hank Pym. Of course, uh, Evangeline Lilly is in this movie as his daughter. And uh, everybody is just really, really good. Michael Pena. Oh, man. He's so funny in the scenes. And even T.I. You know, he was great. T.I. was the only thing that I liked about uh, what was that movie with Will Ferrell that was awful and I gave like a 2 out of 10. Uh, Get Hard. T.I. was in that movie for about three minutes, and he was the best three minutes out of that entire film. And again, he is fantastic in this movie. But yeah, going back to uh, Paul Rudd, his Scott Lang is arguably the most human character that Marvel has put up on the on the big screen. He's the most relatable character so far. Yeah, I get it. He's, he's an ex-convict, and he was put in jail for some stuff, but he's not a bad guy. You know, he was put in jail for something that he, he, he felt needed to be done. He was a whistleblower, and kind of like a Robin Hood-esque character. He, he stole from the rich, gave back to the poor, and uh, they didn't like that, so they put him in jail for a very, very long time for that. But he's a good guy. He has these everyday struggles after he comes out of jail. He is struggling to uh, pay his, his rent and to pay bills and to maintain a job and to pay child support and to be there for his family. And it's stuff that people every day in this country and just around the world are going through. He's a relatable character, and that's one of the things that I really liked about him. And because of who he is, Hank Pym, played by Michael Douglas, sees him and wants to give him a shot at redemption. Like, there's something that is going to happen in this universe that needs to be done, and he needs somebody with uh, with Scott's set of skills to don the Ant-Man suit, to take over that mantra, to pretty much save the world, and to stop this technology from getting into the wrong hands. So without sharing more about what the plot is in this movie, uh, just know this, uh, Ant-Man is nothing that I expected it to be. I thought it was just going to be this movie about this guy who can shrink down in size and beat up a bunch of bad guys. And while there is a bunch of that in this movie, that's not what it is. It's got a really great origin story. It uh, makes you care about these characters. And it ends up being a really fun heist movie, which I didn't even think it was going to be. I haven't really been watching uh, the trailers for this because I wanted to be surprised. I feel like some movies this summer have uh, done a bad job of uh, spoiling themselves with the trailer. So I, I've avoided this one because I do uh, enjoy the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Some movies more so than others. This is absolutely at the top of that list. I would put this in my top three favorite Marvel movies so far. Uh, when it comes down to just a single character, it's right up there with Iron Man. I, I would put it neck and neck, maybe even beating Iron Man. I really enjoy this movie, so that's why I have to give this movie a 9 out of 10. Well, how come a 9 and not a 10, Ransom? You don't. You never give out 10? I gave, I gave 10s out. I, I gave a 10 last year to Guardians of the Galaxy. I also one to Bird. I gave two 10s last year, guys. Uh, but I only give 10s out to uh, movies that do that special thing, that tickle that part of my brain, that take me back to my childhood. And while this movie was a lot of fun, it just didn't do that. Uh, stick around, though, because after the movie, there is a mid credit scene and an after credit scene. So there's not just one, there's two this time. And uh, I think you guys are going to love them, especially if you are a fan of the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, go watch this movie, guys. A ton of fun.